Forbes magazine named AngelPad one of the top five incubator, accelerator, startup builders out, out in the world. And we're going to talk to Thomas Corte, the guy who started it all right now. Who are you? Hey, my name is Tomas Korte. I'm the founder of AngelPad. I started AngelPad about two years ago after leaving Google where I was for seven years as a product manager and a bunch of other things. Yeah, and so how many companies have started at AngelPad so far? Yeah, so at AngelPad we're at the fourth session right now, the guys that you see here. Um, we've a total of uh, just under 50 companies at this point. Yeah, and what makes, uh, why did Forbes say you were one of the top five incubators or, uh, I don't even know what you call these things anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't they're know, they're almost like it? company factories, right? I know. It's like a factory <laughs> where companies get Sweatshops, built. right? Sweatshops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should come up with a common term, yeah. I think you know, incubator, accelerator, are kind of all the same things. I think we're all in the business, um, AngelPad is in the business of you know, taking companies uh, from a very early stage, any time from idea um, all the way to like, you know, some prototyping, all the way through really, you know, fundraising and, and, and then beyond as they become part of the, uh, the, the network of companies in AngelPad. Yeah. When, you know, uh, so there's Y Combinator, Techstars, you, and uh, a few others that are in the top five group. What, what are the challenges for these company builders now? What, what's it like? Because I see so many more incubators around the world. I mean, Rackspace, uh, we keep track of all right. the incubators. That, and just in Europe, we have a list about this long That's of true, incubators yeah. that true. are true. starting just in Europe, not to mention Brazil and China and I Israel. Know, and I know, I know. It there's, there's a new one every, every day, literally. I think, you know, starting a company has become really easy. You know, we, you know, a couple of years ago, we said, oh, you barely need any money to start a company. But at this point, you actually, you barely need any money. The first, you know, 100K, you get fairly easily. Yeah. Um, you, uh, you need some technology, you need smart people. So what's happening is that literally any engineer, any, any smart business guy today, any, I think any product manager sitting in Facebook, Twitter, or Google, you know, any of these companies is thinking about his own company, like what can I start? And I think with that you have just a vast proliferation of, of companies and or, or startups. And I think the, uh, the challenge that we run into is to decipher which is, you know, interesting features and stuff like, oh, I'd love to have this versus I'd love to have this and you can build a real company around it. Yeah. Uh, right behind us is one of the top venture capitalists and he, he, you have a continual flow of venture capitalists who come through here and they like it because they can meet with 12 companies right one after another and they can see a, a broad range of companies. Yeah, right? that's right, that's right. So I think, you know, when I, when I look at what AngelPad does and, and, and how we fit into the ecosystem of the startup world, and we really take companies from you know, mostly pre-funding, actually almost always pre-funding, pre-money. We're the first money um, that we put in. Uh, that uh, is put in these companies. And then we work really with them on defining, you know, what is an interesting company? What is a large market? You know, the, the people, you know, we can't change how smart they are. Everyone, every single person here is extremely smart, is extremely accomplished. What we can help them with is understand what does it take to build a large company versus what does it take to take to build something that is an interesting feature? Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the angel community, the micro VC and the, and the venture capital community has started to realize if we go to incubators, we kind of have this first cut of companies that understand what it takes to build a venture-backed business, which is just a kind of a different definition of a business than a normal, a normal startup or you know, a, a real company that makes money from day one. Um, yeah. The expectations are just so different, how big these companies have to be, and understanding that and building around that is really, really a key, key thing what we do. Yeah. yeah. How much equity do you take out of these companies? Right, so, so we take 6% in common shares from all these companies. Yeah. And uh, just a mile away, Instagram started at a table just like this, right, That's with right. two guys. That's and right. a, big, a big success story. How is that changing the expectations of startups? And is it really <laughs> playing with everybody's brains? I think so, I think so, right, everyone. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, Instagram is, is one of those ultra successes that you see every, every few years. You know, I mean, the last one I can remember is, is YouTube, right, where just a couple of guys, you know, a few months, or actually they've been longer than a few months, but let's say less than a year, maybe a little more, and just have this ultra success. Um, I think what's happening with this is that one, everyone stops and goes like, oh my God. Um, then founders go like, hey, this could have been me. You know, I talked to this guy six months ago at South by Southwest and it was just him and a co-founder. And I think then 
the realization and the rationalization comes in that these truly are outliers. You know, there's every day there is someone winning the lottery, literally. Doesn't mean that everyone should put all their money in the lottery. Um, but it's a, it's a great validation that there's truly a lot of, of value that can be created. I mean, they have, you know what, you know better, 30, 40 million users. Yeah. 50, um, now. 50 I mean, million in, the, in a year, now. right? Yeah. So, so for me, the validation is, look, it doesn't take that much to actually build a large company with a large user base. You know, the, it's, the time is not over um, to build another Google, to build another Facebook, to build another Twitter, right? You know, every day someone starts and we'll see the next great company, you know, literally being, being, uh, being built on a table here, here what, like this. What does it take to be a company leader now? I, w you know, before the camera started, we talked about leadership and how, do, how does one of these guys get other people to believe? Right believe that they could be the Instagram. Right, right. Right. I think this is actually the, the, one of the most important parts. You know, there's, there's all these, these general ingredients that you have. You, know, you want extremely smart people, extremely driven people, people that, that kind of pour their life into it, someone that has a unique insight. Um, all of those are well talked about, well documented, read all the blogs. Um, one thing I think that few people really think about um, starting a company is, you know, it takes money and it takes talent. Yeah. And to, to, to get talent, to retain talent is probably the most difficult thing today. You know, you're competing with, you know, Foursquare and Twitter and Facebook, all the usual suspects. You're competing with someone starting their own company. So why should they come work for you? And unless you are a charismatic leader that um, has a profile um, of, them, uh, of, the, of their own and, or is, 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 a, is a rising star and is working on a problem that people are truly inspired by and want to work on, I think it's very hard to get past the you know six eight engineers. You know yep. once you once you get past that, you just you just have to stand out. And and we really are looking for those kind of founders, those kind of leaders that can build large companies and run those companies. You know from two people to uh, you know two thousand or ten thousand people. Yeah. When this video runs, uh, it'll be the demo day. Yeah. So all, all of the twelve companies here will be standing up here and pitching to That's right. venture capitalists. That's right. Um, can you give me a sense of a few companies here that you think are uh, going to be interesting ones to read about in TechCrunch? Sure, uh, they're, they're, they're all, every single one is very interesting. <laughs> um, I know you're all gonna, your babies are going to make me choose one, right? Um, no, I think you know, all the companies are really interesting. I think what, what's interesting, what's, what's good for, for someone that comes through here, um, which is a, a small set of, of, of venture capitalists, of super angel and angels, is that you know, everyone has a core in investment thesis. You know, people, you know, look at education and say, look, these are the things I'm looking for right now. These are the kind of companies I'm looking for. Um, when they come here, you know, they have 12 companies and every single one is going to walk out saying, look, there's three or four companies I want to talk to afterwards. They fit into what I do. Yeah. Um, we've, we really have a very broad, broad range of companies, all web technologies, mobile technologies. Give me a taste of what, what kinds of companies I would see at demo, sure. demo day today. Sure. Sure. So we have um, you know, a couple of companies that work on on location and social and mobile. Um, so basically, figuring out you know what should you do, how should you do it. No one really has solved the problem of you know if you if you look for car insurance, you go to Google, right? If yeah. you look for your friends' updates, you go to Facebook. Um, if you look for a great sushi place that your friends have been to and like, um, it's much harder to do. So there's you know I believe there's a a large company to be built around around social search around location, especially. And in which in company is that? Um, there's actually there's a couple that are that are that are that are in that Give space. Give me names. Um, <laughs> there's Spotivate and uh, and uh, Spotsetter. Okay. That are in that space. Then on the kind of extreme other side, we have a company that uh, works on cloud management. So if you are on Rackspace, if you need to deploy more servers, if you uh, have to um, ramp up instances and ramp them back down, if you uh, do cross-provider uh, cross um, deployments, yeah. um, kind of critical infrastructure, a team from you know, Microsoft Azure, they've helped build Microsoft Azure. Um, you know, on the Smart guys, I, I met them when I worked at Microsoft actually. And uh, they're doing some interesting stuff, and they work on OpenStack and Amazon. And exactly. Redspace. Actually, they were they were at OpenStack, which I know you're really really involved in as well. Yeah. And they've had tremendous reception there at the OpenStack conference. Um, same thing with you know any any mobile technology is always really interesting. Um, we uh, what's that company by the, by the way that does the cloud? Uh, the cloud is called uh, um, Elastic Box. Okay. Elastic, Elastic Box. Box. Elastic Box, exactly. Yeah. Then we have um, a couple of companies that work around uh, hiring. You know, in, in an environment like this, hiring is like the, the key number. You know, it's fundraising and hiring people. Um, and we have one company, uh, Rollpoint, who is who's really tackling the, the social recruiting. Um, you know, how do you get people that are in your social network to work for your company? And they've had they've, the companies they've talked to so far that are in this hyper growth phase, going from you know ten to uh, 200 people this year. 
um, they're very excited about what they're doing. So really just a, a broad, broad scope. How do you find these companies? Well, you know, we turn every stone, and that's you know, half, half the year we really look for companies. We basically, we, uh, we have you know, three months of where we're looking for companies and, and screening them, three months session, and then we go three months looking for companies, three months session. So literally, you know, half the year we're looking for these companies. Yeah. We find them everywhere. Literally, um, you know, people can just apply through the website, and we get a lot of applications through that, and that's a, that's a really good source for us. Um, yeah. Because it gives people that don't have access to Silicon Valley a very kind of one-click access. We get uh, people referred from from investors that say, "Look, you you know, there's there's a lot of raw potential. Let's let's uh, let's you know, go to AngelPad, for example, and 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 work with these guys." Yeah. Uh, we get a lot of people now referred directly from uh, from from founders that have been at AngelPad before. There's some 150 founders now that have gone through the program and had the experience. Um, so those really is a is a is a very much growing growing source. Yeah. Do you see the Y Combinators and the tech stars as competitors, or do, do, are they just separate from you and, and you have your own deal flow and they have their own deal flow. Sure, I think in the, in the, in the broadest scope we are all competing for top talent. Um, okay. I think individually speaking, uh, you know, people choose the location they want to be in. There's, it makes, there's companies that make sense for to be in Boulder or in New York. Um, it makes sense to, uh, to, 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 you really, they all have very different approaches. Um, you know, at AngelPad we are very involved in companies. You know, we usually have um, a dozen or so companies uh, we are in, in the office every day together, you know, there, there's my office there with me, I'm with them um, literally every day. And we get very, very deeply involved um, yeah. with these companies. Do you have a good advisor network that comes in and helps companies with different different things? Yes, or? yes we do. We have, um, we have uh, uh, several kind of, you know, core advisors um, that, uh, that, that bring a specific knowledge. So if you say, look, you know, we really need to figure out this viral factor. Like, you know, there's a couple of people that really have figured this out for, for very well-known companies um, and they help the companies. They, they come in and help those companies. Um, we then also have a, a network of just people that have built companies before. But we keep it actually a very tight network. Um, one thing that I've seen is that, you know, in this stage these companies are at, um, every piece of feedback they're getting, they're really taking to heart. And there's, there's more than one way to roam. Um, and there's not one right way to do it. And if you, if you just have too many, too many influences, you kind of end up being very confused. Um, so you want to start with a, a, a core vision from someone, and then you want to validate that. And you want to have a few advisors that you truly value to give you feedback on that, to adjust like this, rather than like giving, you know, you can do build an enterprise company, you can build a consumer company, you can go B2B, you know, enterprise, you can sell $100,000, or you can sell $19. Literally the same kind of company, is just a different model. Yeah. And so we find that with fewer advisors um, that, that, that we highly value, um, you actually get companies to, uh, to, uh, to be successful faster. Yeah. One last question. Uh, uh, today is uh, the demo day, yeah. and so some companies will get term sheets. Do you help them uh, figure out how to negotiate, or how to, uh, what's that process like now? <laughs> sure, and, no, and absolutely. I, I keep hearing that the entrepreneur is more in charge this, this year than they were three years ago, right? Yeah, three years yeah. ago, they almost had to beg for uh, funding, and that's now true. they probably have to fight off a few. Or th that's uh, true, that's true. Up. I mean, it certainly is, it's, a, it's a very good funding climate right now. If you're a founder, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good time to be a founder. Um, people want to give you money. Um, there's a lot of money has come through Facebook and through, uh, you know, employees. Um, that, that, that now are new angels, um, there's a lot of funds that want to deploy money. Uh, we're very involved through the process. Uh, you know, we, uh, our focus is finding the right investor for the right company. You know, yeah. it's, getting money is one thing, getting money from the right people that help you build a company and get you to the next step is a, is a, is a different thing. Um, yeah. So we're very involved in that. You know, we know all these guys. We have 50 companies that have been funded, so there's probably uh, two, 300 investors in Silicon Valley that have funded angel-pad companies. Uh, we know how much value they add. We, uh, we know how they can help companies. And we really do focus on that very much. Um, the combination of money and who you get it from um, really does have a material outcome on the company's success. Very cool. Where do we uh, learn more about AngelPad and how do we uh, get our, our companies in front of you? Sure, absolutely. So um, angelpad.org, um, we have an open application process that uh, probably opens again in about uh, a month or so. Uh, but just leave your information there. We invite people. It's a completely open process. It's a fairly straightforward. We ask people for a two-minute video. Um, in that two-minute video, let me just talk about this for a second, because yeah. people always ask me about that. In the two-minute video, we really want to get a good feeling about you know, what the team is, what vision they have. Um, we don't want to see a product demo or something. We just want to have, you know, pop up the camera and start speaking like you would meet me and say hi. 
you know, I do this, I, I, you know, this is where I come from, um, that's what my plan is, and that's why I think it's going to be successful. So just yeah. a very straightforward, um, and then we go through this process and, and uh, find 12 more companies like this. Very cool. Yeah, Thank you excellent. so much. Thank you. Good to come out. Good to have you back here.